friends and listeners. Today we have Ms. Amanda Gronstel, Senior Economic Mobility Director at the Community Council of Greater Dallas. She is an experienced nonprofit leader with expertise in poverty alleviation, whole family care, nonprofit collaboration, program development, and program evaluation. Strong performer who possesses interpersonal skills well honed to support community outreach and strategic partnership development. A servant leader who is team oriented, relational, who obtains buy in from diverse stakeholders and who focuses on preserving the dignity of clients. Samanda, welcome to our show. Let's talk computer science. Thank you for having me here. Yes, let's talk computer science and everything in between. What you are doing is extremely meaningful in life and your team. So tell us more about Community Council of Greater Dallas and your role at Community Council of Greater Dallas. So I feel like I keep um, working with these wonderful organizations that are gems in our community. Community Council is an 80 year old organization that has been part of the Dallas fabric with the whole motivation of service um, to make sure that we improve the quality of life of our residents. In my uh, specific department, um, it is called economic mobility. And my role is to address issues that are even more important today, uh, especially given the pandemic. So the first pillar of my department, uh, it all has to do with uh, making sure that people who need services along the lines of utility assistance, mortgage, rent, uh, transportation, uh, receive the services they need to be able to, you know, care for themselves or their family. The second pillar of my program is for those who, you know, whether you have been affected by COVID-19 or other issues, uh, we help you get back on track with your job. You know, if you just need a job and you want uh, some additional people who will have your back, you know, give you additional uh, job referrals, connect you with uh, other employers, you can come to us and believe me, we will try everything we can to make sure you obtain employment. And then my last pillar is where you and I have worked before, uh, where, you know, people are in a place in their life where they finally decided that they want a career, not just any job, and this might entail um, beefing up their skills, obtaining additional certifications or diplomas to ensure that they advance in their career. And that is truly my favorite one because that's when you can see actual change uh, so that people can transition out of poverty. That's really amazing. Can you tell me a little bit about how your uh, group has achieved your goal? Oh, so I was I was sharing with you that uh, our year end closing uh, for our program uh, just happened today, and it's good to ha finally have the numbers in front of us. But we are required by the state of Texas to transition out of poverty at least a minimum of 122 people, and this year we were able to transition 134 people. So we're very proud of that, uh, especially because, you know, as you know, the pandemic has hair, has hit our community very hard. And so every person that we were able to get back on track, get a job, you know, and, and keep their income coming in, it, it means a lot. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. So can you talk about your clients and the services that you provide and how can someone contact you for the services? Yes, so the easiest way actually is to go online. Um, you know, go to ccadvance.org um, and choose uh, economic mobility and then apply online. It will give you a rundown of the basic qualifications that we need uh, for you to be eligible for a program. And they consist of, of basically three main things. So number one, uh, you need to be an adult. Um, because you will be asked to sign some paperwork, so 18 years and older. Um, the second thing is you have to be a Dallas County resident, 
Um, and the third thing is that you have to be, depending on the services that you're looking for, rental mortgage assistance is at 200% of the poverty level. So we have a lot of services that are available for our clients. Uh, we do uh, mortgage, rent, utilities. Because of how um, the pandemic has hit us, uh, and this involves, you know, some of your students, we're also able to pay for um, wireless service so that you can keep making those job searches so you can keep on your study. So we will pay for uh, internet connection mm -hmm, so that you can keep do it. So there's a lot of things that community council can do for any client that qualifies. Okay, thank you for sharing that. That's great information. So. Mm -hmm. Can you please talk about workforce development job training programs that you guys offer? We um, take a look at Texas workforce and the fields that are high demand, and we focus on those fields for sponsorship. So as you can imagine, a lot of technology programs did, um, not, not only full stack, um, but also beginning engineer programs as well. It used to be that our biggest um, cohorts were around CCNAs, uh, and uh, we also did, you know, CompTIA A plus certifications. So um, we have a sector around IT, but we also have a sector around logistics, almost anything in the medical field. Uh, so think about nursing, think about nuclear medicine, radiology, um, think about patient care tech as potential fields as well as construction areas. You know, there are certain things that still cannot be uh, sent overseas. So, you know, if you want to be in the trades, plumbing, if you want to do um, drafting, if you want to do project management, you can come to us. And we have many different partners that provide the training and we pay basically your tuition. So, you know, if you think that, um, you are, let's say you are a college student at Dallas College or uh, UNT, UTA, uh, Texas Tech, you know, chances are that you are in a field that we will sponsor. And uh, seniors, folks who are going to graduate within this year, um, take priority. So like you fund for their college fees and additional like workforce development job focused training programs? Yeah, so we have both certifications and diplomas at the two-year level and at the four-year level. We haven't sponsored somebody at the master's degree level yet, um, but we would be open to do so as well. So can you please talk about the different technology training programs that you provide and how people can apply for these programs? For any sponsorship that uh, people might look for is the same process. Um, you know, you go to our online portal, we will ask you to have all your permanent documents right here, you know, right in your computer. So for example, your ID, your social security, birth certificate, if you are attending a program or already have some certifications under your belt, make sure you have a copy of those certifications. If you're currently attending college, make sure you have your transcript with you so that you can upload it. And you will also require the last 30 days of pay steps. If you are not working, uh, we will have you sign documentation to certify that. But we really are trying to establish that you are a Dallas County resident, that you're 18 years and older. Uh, if you are attending a college institution, your GPA must be above a 2.7. That is why we require a transcript. If you don't know what sort of technology program you want to go into, uh, we will try to uh, steer you. We have a learning management system that does some uh, career assessment tests that you can take so that we help you narrow it down. But it's it's the same process, you know, you qualify based on your residency and that uh, you're at the poverty level that our grants will allow us uh, to sponsor you and then uh, we can take you on for, like I said, 
any 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 program that you can think of that is offered at UNT, UTA, Texas Tech, Paul Quinn College. Um, and the reason I keep mentioning these is because we have MOUs with these vendors as well as uh, Rex programming. Okay, so what kind of results do you hope from these technology training programs for your clients? The main result is, of course, we want you to get employed. You know, any person coming to us, the goal is not just learning for the sake of learning. You know, our goal is that once you graduate, you are able to find employment and you are able to uh, have a living wage or higher. You know, our goal is not just for you to be stable. Our goal is for you to thrive and grow and be able to care for yourself and your family. Okay. Yep, yeah, totally makes sense. So can you please talk about the not ideal technology training program? So th the ideal uh, program is where you can build upon what you go through. So, you know, in a, in a situation where you can keep getting certificates so that you can advance your career and your pay. Um, so the idea is you come in and, you know, maybe you have never been exposed to technology and, and Sandia, you and I have had these discussions all the time, but, you know, we want everybody to, you know, try this, you know, and not be persuaded, not to be intimidated, you know, just because there may be people who are not of the same gender or who may not look like you in a class. You know, we want folks to know that that does not matter. You know, we will get you the support through tutors, through um, additional um, hands-on expertise. The idea is that you build upon your experience and certifications or diplomas so that you can um, obtain a higher wage. You know, we talked about programs there are three months, six months, a year, and two years. And one of the, the good, great things about a program is that we're flexible. As long as what you are seeking to get a certification on will help you obtain a job that is truly, you know, that truly provides a living wage, um, you know, we will sponsor you. Because, again, it's the reason that this scholarship is important um, is not just because we want you to keep learning, you know, it's because we want to ensure that you will get a job, that you will get a good pay. I had a student who had come to me. Her dream was actually to be a business owner. Um, and this was a couple of years ago, but I was really proud of her because she, she stuck it out. And what she ended up doing was like, so her, her dream was she wanted to be a business owner and but she also loved helping people so she actually became first she became a patient care tech then she became a licensed vocational nurse and then she became an actual nurse right now she's gotten a degree in business management so she's running her own retirement home so wow. you know she has folks who come in and assist um her residents who are seniors and but she's it's her business you know so you know your dreams are your own and you know you can you can combine them as best that you know they fit and how you combine them is out to you you know so some folks want to be uh, in IT because IT is there's never something boring right <laughs> it is usually a, these projects that will challenge you and that you know it's it's usually under the gun for time because they needed to be um, completed fast and it's a different every day so um, you know if, if you kind of gravitate toward that and it's a field that you know once you go into definitely you cannot be that type of person that doesn't want to keep on learning because IT changes all the time I would not recommend this of somebody who who does not want to be a term life learner um, and who who wants to keep on you know advancing so you know there are certain things that you have to have in your personality but you know, other than that, you know, your dreams are your own, so. Yep. Yeah, that's, that is a super impressive story of that lady who, who wanted to become a business owner and who became a nurse and has her own uh, place to take care of 
the elderly, right? Yeah. Correct. And, you know, when we were together, we had uh, some young people who, so, and this is the other way, you know, so he started his own music. Um, and what he wanted to do with Full Stack is um, establish his website where he can sell his music. So, like, you know, he was already an entrepreneur, but he wanted the skills to also promote online and, you know, keep track of vendors and clients. Uh, with the new full stack um, certifications and knowledge. So, you know, how you combine them, how you incorporate what you learn um, is up to you. You know, the whole point is we will make sure, though, that it, it needs to be something that will pay, <laughs> you know, that will keep you afloat, that will help you thrive. Yep. Yes. So can you tell me a little bit about the especially with the pandemic and everything being virtual what is the geography that the clients that you serve so our clients come from all over the county uh you know we serve all of dallas county so the good news is that we're not limited by zip code you know it's dallas county so you know if you live in north dallas just because you live in north dallas doesn't mean that you're making, you know, really good money, you know, you could be struggling. And one of the things that we have seen because of the pandemic, though, is there are more middle class families um, who are in need of assistance, because, you know, one or both um, providers lost their job. So we're seeing more people with more skills, um, who are now job searching. Yeah, I am so grateful that Dallas has an organization like you guys helping them. And that's really impressive that you guys have exceeded your goal for 2020, even during the pandemic. So mm -hmm. congratulations. Mm -hmm. Any any last, Thank you. Any, any other message that you want to send to the listeners? I think that um, we must remain hopeful and we must remain um observant because there are a lot of resources out there and you know when you look at where you need to find um, help you know there are certain you know organizations that have been tried and true I mentioned that I work the community council but um, we are only one department uh, our other sister programs one of them is 211 so if you are trying to figure out because I get this questions all the time. It's like, well, I don't know where to find the help. You know, you can actually talk to a live human person if you just call 211. And they will narrow down, you know, where you can contact folks on the phone if you if you don't want to log in. Uh, but 211 or 211.org is a place where you can find additional assistance. And, you know, just don't give up. Surprising things will come your way. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, everyone out there, be positive. Don't give up, as Amanda has mentioned. Thank you. Bye.